The High Performance Canada Series is brought to you by 475 High Performance Building Supply. This series is also brought to you by Inotech Windows and Doors. Today on The Build Show, we're in Squamish, British Columbia, checking out this awesome new company, Tag Panels. They are a high performance and passive house wall panel manufacturer. Everything's being done right inside this facility behind me. Everything from framing to installation to membrane installs, taping, window waterproofing. It's all being done here. They're supplying all kinds of local builders with a high quality prefabricated building panel system. Let's go inside and talk to David. Hey David, here we are in your awesome 10,000 square foot facility. So why don't you walk us through what happens here from, from start to finish? Yeah, absolutely. So this is where the lumber comes into the factory. We bring yep. all the lifts of uh, timbers, two by sixes, two by eights, and PSLs and glue lambs. They Everything. come in along yep. this wall here. They're brought into one of two cut stations that we have in this facility. Um, all of the shop drawings for each panel uh, has a, a exact cut list for each panel yeah. onto it. Great. Um, one guy sits and cuts every piece of timber for per panel. Once those pieces are uh, cut, they're then la loaded up onto one of the dollies. Those materials are then rolled over to our tables. We have two tables at the moment. It allows us to run two jobs concurrently or normally do one job twice as fast. Wow, okay. The idea being that all the timber that is pre-cut, loaded over to the tables, the guys never need to reach or lift for another piece of timber. It's all pre-cut. It's always just right there and they're just loading it off the Absolutely. dolly onto the table. Yeah. Trying to make it as efficient as possible. Great. Um, and then over here we have a three-ton uh, gantry crane. This is amazing. Yeah, so this runs the full 75 feet of the workshop. Yeah. Um, they can frame off these corners here, the panels move down, the tables, they're then flipped with the crane. This is our Gutex, which we use, which is a wood fiber insulation. So this is used as a kind of sarking board, like yeah. certain exterior sheathing. Uh, it's got insulation properties, it's also vapor open, which is very important. Yeah. Um, this goes on one side of the panel. The panels are then moved along to the end over here, where we have uh, access for semi-trucks to bring in uh, where we load the panels on. So you bring your 30, 35 foot trailers right into the shop, uh, right underneath the crane. Absolutely. Once the trailer comes in, we load all of the panels onto the trailer and the trailer goes to site. What's important is that the panels are actually built in reverse order because yes. the last one to be built is the first one that's needed on site. Yeah, so the guys, guys work everything out. Another big piece of this multi-step process is thinking about material mobility. You always have to think about how that panel needs to be moved next. So at the end of their framing process, they're lacing in these straps in the top plate, out the top plate, so they can always have that panel mobile. How big is this house? Yeah, so this, this is a house in Burnaby, BC. Yeah. Uh, it's a 3,000 square foot house. Okay. What you're looking at here is all of the main floor uh, exterior walls and all of the main floor interior walls. On the exterior walls, we have all the uh, framing the service cavity as well. Service cavity too. So yeah. that's the whole main floor. Yeah, ready exactly. to go. Yeah, so Framing, insulation, and all uh, air barriers and vapor barriers all installed already. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So just to take you through the panel, the interior plywood is our uh, vapor retarder. Mm -hmm. So this is replaces your poly. This uh, gives you shear value also, right? Gives you shear value yeah. as well. It's uh, a vapor retarder at this thickness. Then we have a two by eight. Uh, this is then filled with our cellulose or a NOF jet stream product. So these holes here are where we've cored out. Mm -hmm. We put a lance in, we fill the cavity with that insulation and then we mm -hmm. seal it with this Tescon vanitate. And then the exterior here has the 22 millimeters of Gutex that I was showing you mm -hmm. over there. So this is the exterior. Mm -hmm. So this is vapor open. Vapor uh, open. Yeah, so any moisture trapped in here can actually diffuse and dry to the exterior. Then we wrap in a high performance membrane, this yeah. one being the Proclima uh, Mento. Which also breathes outwards. Exactly. And is yeah. airtight. Yeah, and then on top of that, we attach the strapping. Yes. So one layer of strapping. Exterior rain screen on the outside. Yeah. So you have two airtight layers because exactly. you guys tape the plywood. The value of this facility really just comes from the fact that we have a framing site right now that's in an indoor controlled environment. None of this wood is getting a lick of moisture on it, it's completely controlled. They have cranes for lifting, they have all their insulation here. So we have a framing site, we have an insulation site, and we have an air tightness site, all in this beautiful facility.
So we use two types of insulation. We use a recycled newspaper and a recycled glass product. Awesome. Uh, we're big into our em embodied carbon as well. We don't yeah. want to fill our buildings with plastic. We have a Crandall machine here. So this actually takes both types of the insulation. It then grinds them up, lofts them along a 150 foot cable uh, pipe here. Mm -hmm. This is the lance, which we then put into the cavities. It has a clicker on it. So once it reaches its required density, which is super important, uh, it draws out and then we have the required amount of insulation in. So this, this reads the density of the insulation and, and then, oh wow, exactly. that's, that's really cool. It's a little bit like the gas pump. When you're yeah. filling up your car, it clicks. It clicks Once off. it reaches the full, so. That's great. So does, yeah. it, does it depend on the project, which insulation you choose or? Exactly, okay. every panel is engineered back from an energy model or from the architect or the client, depending on how much R value they require. Okay. And depending on that and then the thicknesses, we can achieve a higher R value with the glass wool. So okay. we get a thinner wall. Okay. Uh, but our preference is to use the recycled newspaper because okay. it's a uh, full cradle to cradle. So this is recycled newspaper from Curbside Collection. Uh, this is what we put into our panels. You, you can, can actually see the different colors of ink in there You too. can see the letters on it as well. Oh, cool. So it's a great product, cradle to cradle. It's recycled and it's also recyclable after the lifespan of the building. Wow. It's a great product. So this, when it's hard packed and dense in the wall, what is this R value per inch on this one? This is R 3.7 per inch. Not bad. It's great. Yeah, very breathable, healthy for your home, yeah. vapor diffusion, it's great. Yeah, it smells like newspaper still. Yeah. And so you're able to align with BC step code quite easily by just upsizing insulation. Yeah. You keep your same sim simple system of the air, air tightness layers mm -hmm. and, um, and then you're able to achieve certain numbers. Yep. Yeah. The other key benefit with the prefabrication is the air tightness. Yeah. Air tightness is huge in the step code, as you know. So yeah. when we're getting up to passive house, where it's just 0 0.6 air changes and step five, which is one air change, mm -hmm. requires the contractor to do a lot of additional work. Yep. If you're trying to tape poly, uh, to create that air, tight, uh, air tightness, it's very tricky. Our primary airtight mm -hmm. layer is our plywood. So you're taping sheets of plywood to tape sheets of plywood. Yeah, the, it's, the seal is just so much tighter. To, you're seeing walls here, but we do all of the floors and the roofs. So these are floor panels. Uh, so this is your typical TGI floor that you've, everyone in BC and Canada is familiar with. Yeah. Um, there's your top layer. So this is a um, rim board, yeah. PSL rim board here. And then you're right, we're, what we're doing is we're pre-hanging all of the joists so this then gets loaded onto the LVL that's on site. So if you have an ICF foundation, you've installed your ledger, these floor panels just get dropped in and they get nailed off as you go. Okay. So you know as well as I do that when you're a general contractor, if you're site framing, the amount of trouble and hassle to try and hang these in the rain and the inclement yep. weather and to get everything plumb. It's typically, it's, it's one guy working all day on hangers. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Whereas these panels will go in in 20 minutes dropped. All this done on a computer modeling software beforehand, which is amazing. Exactly. Um, and we're going to go check that out next, right? Yep. So David, if you could just walk me through the process of uh, drawings coming from architectur architectural drawings through energy modeling, maybe engineering into your office here where you guys are designing panels? The first step is just to get a set of plans okay. uh, from the architect, usually with some structural information from a structural engineer. We get down to designing and building out every stud, beam, PSL, everything that goes into that model. Uh, the, the software then spits out pricing lists, gives okay. us a linear foot of all the uh, timbers, all the joists, so that our pricing can be very accurate. So you get very detailed just for pricing too. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. then these guys start modeling up the rest of those elements, adding the insulation, adding all the hangers. And it's at that stage that we notice that we find most of the conflicts uh, that exist between the architectural and the structural models. Okay. So it's these guys' job to kind of work as a project manager to, to erase all those conflicts yeah. within this model, which is essentially the built house within the model. Yes. And where we find that as a benefit to the contractor is this is the stuff that they're usually doing on site. Yeah. They're cutting down beams because they're the wrong size or there's an, you know, a, a conflict between a window and a pocket or something like that. Yeah. These guys figure all that out before it goes down to production. All that brain work is happening right here. 
So here's the shop drawing, shop drawing books that come down from the office and right onto the floor. Absolutely, yeah. So the 3D model is created for every house and then it's broken up into the uh, panels. So what you're seeing here is a quick layout showing all the panel connections of a floor. And then this is the uh, floor, layout. floor layout as well, yeah. yeah. So the 3D model spits out every single panel and we have unique information for each panel. This is the cut list that I was referring to. So every panel has exactly the amount of beams, studs, sills required, their exact quantity, the widths, lengths. This is what they work of, they complete this one and then we move on to mm -hmm. the next one. And I imagine this, all this data uh, being spit out by the modeling software is really great for, for pricing too, for when you're pricing these, these jobs for your general contractors, right? You're totally right and then the, the other benefit for us is that we can be very lean with our ordering. Yeah. We can actually define that we're ordering certain lengths rather than just going out and ordering mm -hmm. one like 14 footers. Mm -hmm. We get eight foots if we need eight foots, we get 10 foots if we need 10 yeah. foots. And what that then causes is our waste bin becomes really m marginal. We've got, you know, yeah. uh, an entire house usually fits into, you know, a couple of garbage cans of off cuts. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. What a fantastic new company. Tag Panels really is innovating the local construction market. I'm so happy to have them on my team and I really can't wait to see more from these guys in the future. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you guys on the next one.